Okay, so welcome to the webinar for basics of Apache Spark programming. This is the second webinar in the big data series. The first one was the overview of Spark and how to deploy it on CSC's infrastructure. Uh, as you can see, this is the course page for, for this webinar. And this says that you can, if you haven't watched the part one of this webinar where we tell you what exactly Spark is, or how do you deploy it on CSE's infrastructure? This is the link for the YouTube where you can go and watch the first part of the webinar. But we are going to talk about some of, uh, some parts of the Spark very briefly as well in this webinar. So without further delay, I'll just start the, start the slides. So very briefly, we are going to talk about Spark now. Spark, as the name suggests, it's a open source big data based engine, which is used for processing large amounts of data, large volumes of data. The need for Spark comes because the data is increasing day by day and we have a lot of data that we have to, that we have to deal and the traditional methods typically fail in case the data is very large. And in that case, we have Apache Spark, which is used to deal with large amounts of data by making use of distributed processing. You can use Spark in Scala, Java, Python, or R. In this, in this webinar, we are going to mostly use Python to do all the programming and all the exercises that we are going to show. And uh, the programming in Apache Spark, this uses the MapReduce concept to do the distributed processing. We are going to talk about the MapReduce in the upcoming slides. And why should you care about Apache Spark? Yes, uh, the reason is simple. The data is growing day by day and you need to know about Spark in order to deal with large volumes of data. Key concepts. So the thing with Spark is that it stores the data into memory. So in a lot of cases, when the data is in memory, the processing is very rapid because the data is in the memory so it can make use of it can make use of it and do the processing uh, uh, more quickly as compared to some of the traditional methods or traditional programming languages and it follows the distributed processing concepts what does that mean is that the data is distributed and processed what and where is it distributed it's distributed in the spark cluster across the workers of the cluster we are going to talk about the cluster and the workers in the next slides. So just keep in mind that Spark uses the memory to store the data whenever needed for rapid processing, and it uses the distributed processing concepts by running the workload on a cluster. And you can use, as we have already talked, you can use Spark in Scala, Java, Python, or R. In this webinar, we are going to use Python so this is how a cluster actually looks like. As you can see that cluster, as it says, is set of machines grouped together. So if you are familiar with concepts of cloud computing, these can be individual VMs, or these can be Docker containers, or these can be regular uh, PCs or laptops, which are just uh, chained or grouped together to form a cluster. So, one of the VMs or in in some in advanced cases you can have more than one, but typically you'll have at least one of the VM which would serve as the master and the rest of the nodes would serve as the workers. The point of the master is to serve as the entry point and delegate requests to the worker. So whenever whatever code you are going to type, it's going to go on the master and the master is going to speak to the worker and the workers are responsible for carrying out the actual processing. So this is a cluster with one master, and in this case, two workers. Master is going to read the code and then send the code to the worker for, for the processing. Let's have a look, why do we actually need Spark? Let's have a look at some of the scenarios. So for example, if you have a data set which is six gigabyte and now the data has increased to nine gigabyte. And, uh, you see that the processing time is too high. So what you need to do is you need, you just need to add one more worker. So 
whenever the data increases, you just keep adding the workers like this more and more, and you would be able to process any amount of data that you would like as long as you have resources. So this is, uh, this is very linear scaling that you keep adding more and more machines and you then are able to process large amounts of data without having to restart your setup or workflows or pipeline, whatever you have. In scenario two, what happens is that your data has now decreased. So what are you going to do is that you're going to take the worker down and you do this in order to save your resources and cost. So you add a worker or you delete a worker. In Spark, adding and deleting is quite easy. So you are able to deal with increasing amount of data or decreasing amount of data. These are some of the components of Spark. We are going to mostly talk about the core Spark, the core Spark programming. But in the future webinars, we might be talking about Spark SQL or Spark Streaming or this MLlib, which is Spark's machine learning library and graphics, which is for processing graphical data, uh, graph-based data. So in order to make, in order to do any kind of programming on Spark, we need to type the code in Python, Java, Scala, or R, as we have already discussed. And in this webinar, we are going to use Python. And so we are going to talk about Jupyter Notebooks, which is a web-based application, and it supports a lot of languages like Python, R, Julia, Scala, et cetera. The good thing about this is that you can run it in your web browser and use it to connect to Spark. So we are going to use Jupyter Notebooks in our exercises right now in this webinar and use it to connect to my Spark cluster. So whatever code I'm going to type on my Jupyter Notebook in Python is going to run in Spark cluster. Before we move on, I'll just like to talk about some of the basic data structures that Python has. Most of you would already know this, but just so in case. So this is a Python list. This behaves as a array as called in various other programming languages. So you have the elements. If you want to access this, you put the index. So the first index is which it starts from zero and you get the value as 10. Then this is a Python tuple. If you want to get the fourth, if you want to, uh, if you want to get the last element, sorry, this, there, there was some problem with the formatting. This arrow should be here. So if you want to get the last element, you put the index as four, which is the last index in this tuple and you get the value as 50. And this is a Python dictionary, which is which behaves as a key value pair. So you just put the key and you get the value. So these are the basic data structures that we are going to use further, but Spark offers altogether a new world when it comes to programming. So we already talked about MapReduce Paradigm, at least its name. So it's a programming model which was developed by Google. As the name suggests, there are two phases for processing the data, map and reduce. Map says that you should transform each element in the data set and reduce says that you should combine the data according to some criteria. And Spark uses MapReduce programming model for distributed processing. Many of you who, are, who have used functional programming language, for example, would be familiar with these concepts. And those of you who are not, we are going to see very briefly that how this map reduce works. So for example, we have a data set which contains these five values, one, two, three, four, five. And you apply a map which says that you should multiply each element by two. So when you apply a map and you say that multi multiply each element by two, you get a result something like this, that one becomes two, two becomes four, and so on. This is the map, and then you apply a reduce. So when you apply a reduce, you have to tell some criteria. In this case, my criteria is that please add all the values together. So I just add all the values together and get the result as 30. So map is transforming each element in the data set. In this case, we are transforming it by multiplying each element by two. 
and then reduce is combining the data according to some criteria. In this criteria, we are adding all the elements of the data set together and we are getting 30 as the final output. So this is map and reduce. I would like to bring to your attention that if you have any doubts while the webinar is going on, you can always use the chat box to put your questions there and I'll see the questions and I'll try to answer it while we are going on with the webinar. So the thing in Spark is that we have to make use of Spark's native data structures to do the processing. In this case, the basic building block is called as an RDD, which stands for Resilient Distributed Dataset. It is Spark's native fault tolerant data set, which is operated in a distributed manner. That means that this is able to run on the cluster that we saw that how it looks like. The, when you put the data in an RDD, the processing is carried out across the nodes of the cluster. So the whole cluster is going to work on an RDD. If you put a simple Python list or a Python tuple or a Python dictionary, then those, if you, put, if you put them by themselves, then they are not going to run on the cluster. If you want something to run on the cluster, you have to put those data structures inside an RDD, and then the RDD is going to run on the cluster. That is the most important thing in Spark is that you have to use the MapReduce paradigm, but the MapReduce can only work when you use the Spark's native data structure. So in this case, we have this RDD, you can store any kind of data in it, be it text data, numbers, or Python data structures. Like you can put a dictionary inside it, you can put a array inside it, you can put a tuple inside it. But whatever you have in Python, you have to put it in an RDD to move forward in order to carry the map reduce. Some special types of RDDs are double RDD, and paired RDD. Double RDD are for storing the numerical data, and then paired RDD are used for storing the key pair values. So key pair value is almost same as a Python dictionary. Python dictionary is also a key pair value, but now this is a pair RDD, which is running in a Spark cluster in a distributed manner. So that's the difference. Again, we are going to talk a bit more about the pair RDD. They are a special form of RDD which are used for MapReduce based functions. They are in a form of key value pair. Key can be of any type, value can be of any type. They are used for running the functions that are present in the Spark API. So if you want to do, if you want to use the Spark API, if you want to use the MapReduce or the other uh, transformations that we have in Spark, you have to make sure that you have a pair RDD. As long as you have a pair RDD, you wouldn't find any problems whatsoever using Spark. Generally, if you are programming in Spark, you would find pair RDDs as more common and you would be using it more often as compared to the any other RDDs. Remember, pair RDD is key value pair, uh, key value pair RDD. In order to create the RDD, you can create it using a normal Python collection. So for example, if you have a list, you do sc.parallelize, and this is going to put it in a RDD. And xrange is also a Python function. So this is going to generate a list from one to 99. And again, you are going to put this in an RDD. You are going to use this function and create an RDD. You can create it using normal Python data structures, or you can use text files from the local file system, object storage, database, whatever you have, and you can read the file like this, and then you would get an RDD out of the text file. So these are some of the basic, uh, basic methods which we use to create an RDD. Obviously, there are many more, but since this is a webinar and this is only for one hour, we are going to focus on the ba very basic things So before we move further, I would like to show you my browser. So I have a Jupyter notebook running over here. And this is my, I have written some code 
which is for Spark. So in order to do any programming in Spark, you need an RDD and in order to create an RDD, you need to create a Spark context. So when you run the first cell of this notebook, you create a Spark context. And this is my Spark UI. Whatever I'm going, whatever things, whatever jobs I'm going to run, I'm going to see it's running here. So now I created a Spark context and I'm seeing the application here in my Spark UI that, okay, now it's running. I'm also seeing that I have like four workers over here and this is my master. This is identical to the cluster that we were talking in the previous slides. So since I have now able to create a Spark context, I am seeing the job in my Spark master web UI. And this is a Python, this is a Python list. And I'm creating an RDD out of that. So as you can see, this says that I have now an RDD from my list. And now I'm going to use this range function of Python and is, I'm, I'm going to put it in this function again, which is going to lead me to an RDD. So when you create an RDD, it appears like this. It's an RDD object. In order to convert the RDD object back to a Python, to a Python data structure, you use collect. So you create the RDD, but then if you use a collect, it is going to get you back. It is going to give you back the native Python data structure. So in this case, the output that you see is, an, is a traditional Python list. If you want to calculate the number of elements, instead of collect, you use a count, and then it shows you that you have 99 elements in it. Now, if you want to read the data from a text file, you read, you provide the path of the test, text file, then you check that, okay, you have an RDD over here. When you use a collect, it is going to transform the RDD back to a normal Python data structure. And this is how my text file actually looks like. Pay attention to the commas. So my text file is basically one uh, individual line, which are separated here by a comma. So this is how my text file looks like, and now it's in the form of an RDD. If you want to check the total elements, you just use the name of the RDD and just use count again. So now you have four lines in this RDD. Hence, it's showing me that I have like four elements in my RDD because of these four lines that you can see on the screen. Okay, now we have to talk about spark transformations and actions so we have already talked about map we have already talked about reduce as you can see here but apart from map and reduce there are many more transformations that spark offers us which are called as filter flat map group by key sort by key joins so depending on your use case whatever you knew whatever you are planning to do what kind of analysis you are running you are free to use any of these transformations as long as you are running an RDD. So this is map and then filter, as the name suggests, it's an RDD. You get a new RDD by selecting a subset of your original RDD based on some criteria. Then there's something called as flat map, which is exactly like map, but then it kind of flattens the result. Then we have reduce, then there we have something for sorting and so on. And we have some RDD actions. So we have already seen collect, which is used to transform the RDD back to a Python data structure. Then we have count, which is used to return the number of elements and so on. We have other actions as well. Let's see them in action, uh, in action action, not the spark action. So let's see them now, like how do they behave? So, yep. We create an RDD again. And the RDD is basically created from a Python list, which contains the elements from one to nine. And uh, 
then you use a map. Remember the map we saw in the earlier slide, that map is basically transforming each element. So you're running a function and you're transforming each element. In this case, I have my RDD over here and then I'm throwing a function inside it. And this is my function. These are called as Lambda functions. And we are going to see the Lambda functions in detail in the slide that I have. So basically what it says is that this function, what exactly it's going to do is it's going to take X as an input and provide X comma X in a tuple as the output. So it's going to take one by one these elements that you have in this list and going to convert all of them into a tuple like this. Uh, let's see how the output looks like. So there you go. You had the input with the list where one comma two comma three comma four and so on. And once you used a map with this function which says that take X as an input, so take each element as an input. So the first element was one and convert it into a tuple of one comma one. So one became one comma one, two became two comma two, three became three comma three and so on. It's very simple. Take X as an input, provide X comma X as an output. X would be every element of the RDD. And there you go. So this is how you make transformations in Spark by using map and then by using Lambda functions in there. You can also use a traditional Python function inside it if you want. Uh, so Lambda expressions. They are simple functions that can be you then can be written in a format for an expression. They do not support multi statement functions or statements and they have to return a value. They're very useful in spark transformations because they are mostly one liners. So you don't have to write a function, a proper Python function every time. You can just put one line in your map transformation because you would, you might have a lot of map transformations and you would, you can't be writing Python functions everywhere in your file. It would, it can start to get ugly. So that's why you use this, you use Lambda functions and put the, put the, uh, and, and use them in the Spark transformations. And this is an example of the Lambda, which says that take X as an input and provide X into X as an output. And this is identical. This Lambda is equivalent to this, to writing a normal or a traditional Python function like this. Okay. Uh, and we already talked a bit about this map. So we have already seen a map that, okay, we used this map function and we got this sort of an output. Now, instead of going through the slides and seeing them, let's see them more in action. So we are back here. Now what we need to do is we are going to put one more map function over here, which says that take X as an input. Remember X now has is the tuple because you are using 10 range RDD mapped, the RDD which is already being mapped. So in this case, the input is a tuple, not, not a simple, in, uh, not a simple int integer anymore. It's a tuple actually. So the possibilities in Spark are basically infinite. You can use any sort of input in there and you can transform it to any sort of input output that you want. In this case, we are going to use the tuple. We are going to say that take the first element of the tuple and multiply it by two, and then keep the second element as it is. And then you call a collect, because if you don't call a collect, you wouldn't be able to print it on the Jupyter Notebook, because Jupyter Notebook only knows how to print a native Python data structure, not an RDD. So see what has happened. You took this tuple as an input, you made sure that the first element was multiplied by two, and then you kept the second element as it is. And this is how you transform stuff. So basically once you know what kind of functions you want to use, what kind of things you want to do, you can put everything in Lambda or use a normal Python function or method, and you can just put it there and run a map and transform your data set in whatever way you like. 
Then we have something which is like a variant of the map, which is called as flat map, which is exactly like the map, but in the end, it flattens the result. What do I mean by flatten? We are going to see now. So we are going to take the 10 range mapped RDD, which is this one. And we are going to take, keep the first element of the tuple as it is and add one to the second element of the tuple. And then we are going to use the flat map. When you do a flat map, you see that these brackets are no more, they are gone. So that means flattening of the result. So this becomes one flat Python list. Now we are going to talk about filters. So we are going to go back in there, back in here. So we talked, we saw a bit about map. Now we are going to see about this filter that we have, this filter transformation from Spark. As the name says, it is used to filter out the RDD according to a defined criteria. So in this case, if I have an RDD, which looks like this, which is derived from a text file, and you have the lines as each of the elements, and then you use a filter, and again, you pass a Lambda. The Lambda says that you should take X as an input and only select the, only select those elements where X starts with the word the. So there's only one element over here which starts with the. And what filter is going to do is it's going to select only that element and create an RDD out of it. And you would get a new RDD back with only that particular element. So whatever criteria you are going to put there, Spark is going to use the original RDD and select the subset of the select the subset of 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 that original RDD and get you back the new result and the new RDD. And yeah, let's see this more in action. So this was my RDD. Now I'm going to use a filter and I'm going to say that please select all the elements where the line, line, remember the line is my input. So you can define whatever, this is just a variable. So you can just define X or line or whatever here. And then you say that my input should start with if there are only two lines which start with if, and then it's going to print the two lines over there in a new RDD. Now there are some more applications or transformations. So we have a map again, this map, we, we will use this map to convert our RDD to uppercase. We are going to use the Python, uh, the Python uh, string method, which is called as upper. And that is going to give me an uppercase lines in the RDD. And uh, we are going to use a flat map on the RDD that we have, and we are going to use split so that it splits everything and counts the total number of words. If you want to see what is there in this RDD, then you can just use collect. And there you go, you have split the lines with all the words and then you have flattened the results so you would get one list with all the words. Now we already talked about map now and filter and then right now we are going to talk about reduce. So we have a RDD over here which is made from a Python list containing tuples inside it. And the tuples look like this. They each the first element of each of the tuple is the name and then the second element is some number. And we are going to use reduce by key to combine the data together. Remember, reduce was used to combine the data in some particular criteria. In this criteria, we are saying that please add the numbers together. So we use the reduce by key. What this is going to do is it's going to, the key here is the first element. It's a key value pair key value pair, pair RDD. So it, the first element is the key, it's going to first combine the elements of the same key together. In this case, Ronaldo and Ronaldo are going to combine together and 
the criteria for that is the values of these are going to be added together. So once we do this, you can see that you reduced your stuff by the key. Key here was the name of the players. And in this case, you took the elements together and then you added all of this together. In this case, in case of Messi, it became two and two and then four. And in this case, there was no other key with the same name. So it just stayed as it is. If you want to sort the RDD, you can use sort by key and then you use a collect. So you can sort them by alphabetical order in this case. If you want to sort by value, you can pass, you can use sort by instead of sort by key. And again, you can pass the Lambda saying that you should sort by the second element. Second element is the number of goals that they made. So then you would have the sorting based on the second element. These are very few or very, very basic stuff that we have in Spark, like some of the basic transformations, obviously. Uh, this is a very, this is this is just a one hour webinar so we are only going to talk about some of the very few transformations but there's a spark course that actually happens in csc where it's a two day course it's open for all it's free for all and then everybody can actually come in and try out the exercises and we are going to talk and we talk about some of the more advanced stuff over there so this is just to get you on board with the different spark transformations that how does the world of spark look like when it comes to programming. So let's get back to the slides. And uh, here we have one more important slide which says that how do you convert a tabular RDD to a pair RDD? So remember, if you have a RDD which, which looks like this, which looks like this, now there are like three elements in there. You should always look to convert it into a key pair format like this like this. So you keep the first element as it is, and then you use the map transformation to convert these, to convert the rest of the items into a tuple. If you convert the rest of the items into a tuple, you would make sure that you have a key and a value. So once you have a key, you can use sort by key as we already saw, or reduce by key that we already saw. And there are many more transformations which require you to have a key. So in this case, it is required that you have a key because many of the transformations would require you to have a pair RDD with a key. So you just use a map and then convert rest of the data into a tuple and keep the key as the first element. Let's see a more advanced example over here. In this case, what we are going to do is we would have our RDD uh, converted from a text and we need to get it to look something like this. What's happening here is that I'm counting the occurrence, I'm counting the frequency of each of the words and returning the result like this. So for example here, you, 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 you. You occurs for four times. So I'm going to produce the final output as the actual word and then the frequency of the word and if occurs two times and ask two times and so on. So this is how I'm going to, uh, this is something that I'm going to do with the help of Spark with, with using map and reduce only. And in order to do this, this is the code. We are going to run this code in Jupyter Notebook for further like for, so that we can actually see what's happening. So first of all, I need to, I need to go here and I need to kill my existing job, which was running. And now I need, I'm going back here and I'm starting a new Python application or a Python job. So I start by creating a spark context again. I load the RDD from a text file again and what I do is that I'm going to use a flat map and I'm going to split the split the lines together. We have seen this kind of example in the first exercise that we saw. So we'll have lines inside the file and we are going to take all the lines and use a flat map and split it. And then it would become 
a flat list of words because we are using a flat map. Now we have this. We have to count the occurrence of each of the words. So there's a trick. There's a very common trick in Spark that you should use when you don't have a number over there. So basically, I have to do this using map and reduce, but I don't have a number over here. I just have the strings or this kind of words over here. So if you don't have a number, you can always introduce a number using a map. So use, you use a map. You say that take X as an input and provide a tuple of X comma one as the output. So you will take each of these words as an input and then you would provide the word and then the number one as the output. Once you do this, you can obviously see how it looks like. So you go there, words.map. When you use collect, you can see, okay, this is how it looks like now. You have the word and then you have the number one over there. And this is all part of the output. Now we have one, 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 one everywhere and we need to combine them according to a specific criteria. And we have gone through this thing that if you want to combine something according to a specific criteria, you just use a reduce. So we apply reduce by key, key here are the actual words and then you provide the criteria that add all the numbers, all the ones together. Once you add them together, you would get an RDD, the new RDD with the count of each of the words. And then you use a collect and then you get something like this. And here you go, you have the U and that has been counted as been occurring four times. If you want to sort them according to the order of the counts, you use sort by and then you use, you use a Lambda function and tell the Lambda that you want to sort by on the order of the second element of your RDD, which is the counts. So we use the count and there you go. But now it's in the ascending manner. If you want to transform them in the descending manner, you simply need to put a minus sign over here and then it's going to sort it in a, in a descending manner. And there you go. Uh, this is something that if you want, you can try on your own, but I'm not going to cover right now because of uh, lack of time that I have. So this is basically one of the other example that you can use to see the map and reduce an action. So let's go and see and figure out that how, what exactly happened. So first we took the, we created an RDD from a file and then we use a flat map and a split so that we had one big list with all the words over there. Then we used a one to count the frequency. We used a map and then we attached one to each of the words. Then we used a reduce by key and we specified that we are going to combine them according to the criteria that all the ones add together. So how does reduce by key now works? So it works in, in such a way that it looks for the elements which have the same key and tries to add them one by one together. So in this case, it's going to first take this element which has U in it and then going to find the next element which has U in it and then it's going to add them by two here. So it becomes, the new element becomes like this. Then after that, it's going to look for the next U and it's going to find the U over here and then it's going to make it like this. So it becomes U comma three as a new element and then it's going to find one more over here and then it's going to add three plus one together and finally give you the final element, which is U with a frequency of four. So this is how reduce actually works. It tries, it keeps on accumulating the counts or whatever numbers you have in there according to the criteria that you specify. Analysis of Spark. So generally what happens is that you write your code for example, uh, if you're using Jupyter, you would have seen that you can use Jupyter your, on your own laptop. So you write the code in your laptop on Jupyter, any Spark code, and then you get the output. But 
in my case, if you were seeing that whatever stuff that I was running, I was actually running on top of a Spark cluster. So my Spark cluster in this case has Jupyter installed. So whatever input I give uh, that is running in the Jupyter and then my Jupyter sends it to the Spark cluster and I get the output. So this Jupyter is connected to the Spark cluster as we have already seen that I have my Spark cluster UI over here and I can see that, okay, my application is running there and you can see all the transformations that I did here, all the sorting, collect, reduce by key, everything is over there. And this is running on top of a Spark cluster. How is it running on top of a Spark cluster? Because I have deployed a Spark cluster on CSC using Rahti in this case. So which brings us to the next point that how do you deploy a cluster at CSC? Well, there are two methods of deploying a cluster at CSC at the moment. The first one is that if you want your own cluster to do actual stuff, you should go to rahti.csc.fi and you need to get access for Rahti in the first place. So if you have a CSC account, you should go to my.csc.fi and apply for Rahti access from there. Make sure you have a valid project and some billing units if you are going to apply for the Rahti access. Then you're going to log into Rahti and select Apache Spark from the catalog. So once you have Rahti, you're going to log in here and then you're going to see Apache Spark over there. And then it has a very nice web UI that you can use and create a cluster. So when you create a cluster, your cluster is going to look like this. See, this is my master. I have one master. This is my worker. I have four workers. And I have a Jupyter notebook where I'm going to type my code. And as you can see, I have four workers over here and, this, and I see four workers in here. If you want to add more workers, all you need to do is that expand this and click here. And then it's going to scale up. It's going to add one more worker over here. And now you, you have like five workers over here. So this is as easy. This is so easy if you're running your stuff on top of Rathi. So doing Spark stuff is very easy. You type the code in the Jupyter, you already have everything over here. You have the workers, you just keep adding workers if you need more uh, resources or computing power. Okay, and in case if you don't have a CSC account or a Rathi account, what you could do is you can go to CSC notebooks at notebooks.csc.fi this is the website, this is the, this is the uh, URL. And this is in-house, CSC's in-house service, which is used for training, learning, demo purposes. We host quite a lot of courses on this CSC notebooks. And it's possible to use this with Hakka or with CSC account. So in case if you don't have a CSC account, you can use it, you can use your usual Hakka account and log into this. And then it is possible to launch a Spark, a small Spark cluster via CSC notebooks for learning or testing purposes. So if you want, if you, if you just want to try how does a Spark cluster look like or how does it feel like, you can just use CSC notebooks and you wouldn't have to use your own billing units for it. CSC notebooks is completely free. You have to log in through Hakka account. However, in order to use Spark cluster, this is you have to send an email to us at notebooks.csc.fi. So then we are going to give you a password or a join code that you can use and you would get the cluster access. By default, if you log into notebooks.csc.fi, you're not going to see an option for over there, even though everything is free, but you have to send an email to us so that we would know that who's using our resources, who's using the Spark cluster. So it's easier for us to actually keep a track of all the clusters that we allow people to run from notebooks. So, obviously, if you have Hakka, you can use it, you can log in using Hakka, but I'm just logging in with the okay, and this doesn't work. Oh, so 
So as you can see that my, if I try to log into notebooks, I have Apache Spark cluster over here. This isn't visible by default to, if you, by, to everyone if you log in. But to, make, to uh, enable it, what you need to do is to go here in account and click on join group. And then you need to paste the joining code over here. This joining code can be obtained by mailing us at notebooks at csc.fee. You just mail us and we are going to provide you the joining code. And then you are going to see this Apache Spark cluster, something like this over here. And you can just click on launch and you would have your own toy cluster to play with and to explore Spark and to explore the cluster. Right. So this is, so there are two ways, Rathi and uh, notebooks, whichever you feel like. Rathi is obviously if you're trying to actually use it for doing actual work, you should be using this. Otherwise, you always have uh, notebooks at your option if you're looking to play around. Okay, I guess this is mostly it. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can always put in the comment section in the chat box that you see in the Zoom meeting. Some of the upcoming webinars in the big data series that we are planning is that we could have Spark SQL. If you if you if you are familiar with SQL language, uh, we can use uh, we can we can we can hold a webinar on Spark SQL, which can allow you to see how can you use the SQL language and deal with data frames and have a more much more optimized approach in Spark. Then you have, then we are also planning to hold uh, some webinars in Apache Kafka and Spark Streaming, which is a very new and a very new, very new and interesting topic in big data world, which allows you to deal with real time data streams. So in order to deal with real time data streams, we use Apache Kafka. And if you want to analyze the data, real time data, then you use Spark Streaming. So we are going to actually hold a webinar for these two very soon i hope i suppose you can always give us a feedback that what do you want to listen in future what do you want to learn in future as well so if there are no questions or comments thank you for coming thank you for being a part of this webinar the recording would be available on youtube within a week for this and the recording for the part one is also there on youtube the, this was a very short kind of basic introduction to Spark programming. If you want to know more details, if you want to try out more advanced examples, you should attend the Spark course at CSC, which is going to happen very soon. So you should stay tuned for the announcements that when exactly it's going to happen and try to attend if you can. Otherwise, you also have these kind of links that I have put in the slides. The slides are also, again, available on the course web page. And you can go through the slides and click on the links if you want to try out more advanced examples for Spark. This is the course web page over here. This was the link for the first webinar part one and there are the course materials these are the presentation slides and these are the exercises these are the python uh these are the ipython notebooks that i actually used in this webinar so you can find both of both of those things over here and yeah if you have any problems whatsoever you can always uh, contact us at csc uh, if you need any help with deploying a Spark cluster, you are also free to contact. Remember, there are two ways, Rathi and CSC Notebooks. CSC Notebooks is obviously free for Rathi unit billing units. So if you want to try out stuff, you can always go to notebooks at csc.fee and request us for a joining code. Okay, uh, do we have any questions or comments? If not, then thank you once more. And yeah, see you around for next upcoming webinars, hopefully in big data series.